So one of the most confusing parts of dealing with narcissists is trying to deal with the different personas they show, because often the way they behave changes during the relationship. I just did an exercise with the client I'd like to share with you because I think it really helps increase the clarity when we're dealing with these people. The exercise is quite straightforward. You simply list the different people that you had a relationship with. So you start with a person who was at the beginning of the relationship, the first person that you met, and then you have the next step, uh, what that was like. And then you've got the person, how they reacted during most of the relationship. You might have the person nearing the end of the relationship, and then the person at the end of the relationship, or when the relationship is over. In this case, we take five personas. You might have more, you might have less. Let's just take this as an example. For each of these, what I suggest you do is you look at how many positives you had versus the negatives. The positives, you can simply rate them from zero to three and do little pluses. So at first, during the love bombing phase, you probably had three pluses and it was 10, you probably got 10 out of 10, and you probably had zero negatives. Then what you probably realized is relatively quickly, the number of pluses dropped from three to probably one, that's a two, but then you started having a few negatives that appeared. Then for most of the relationship, you might have had still, you know, some moments uh, that were nice, but then an increase of the unpleasant moments. And then probably, at one point, you didn't really have that many nice moments, but you had a high level of negative moments. And after the end of the relationship, you probably had no nice moments and only negative moments. When we observe this, of course, we can ask, how do we make sense of so many different personas? How is it possible that a person would be full of positives with no negatives and would end with only negatives and no positives? Of course, one of the points is to understand when we speak of negatives, is it someone who's just a little bit grumpy or not very nice or not very pleasant? Or is it someone who is being actually toxic and unpleasant and going out of their way to do horrible things? It's not quite the same thing. So let's just contrast this to what we could call a healthy relationship. A healthy relationship, we understand at the beginning, there are a number of positives and maybe one or two negatives go through, but overall it seems nice, but it is possible that it has the same profile with a lot of positives and no negatives whatsoever. Why? Because people want to make a good impression. Quite often what happens is as the relationship progresses, we have fewer positives, and then at one point it can sort of get neutral. But what we should pay attention to is how many negatives do we get? For most people, the worst they do is have one negative, but most of the time it's rather going to be neutral, such as, I'm not going to make an effort. I'm not going to go out of my way. I'm not going to be too accommodating. I simply withhold the positives. This is one of the key differences with toxic people is they don't have a maximum of negatives that they're going to be spewing out. The maximum negativity someone can put into a relationship tells us everything we need to know about them. If you don't get along with someone and it doesn't work out, it's not a reason to be unpleasant. It's not a reason to attack their pets, to damage their property, to insult them, to try to berate them, to ruin their reputation. This is the type of things that toxic people do. Normally, the worst someone would do would be somewhat limited in terms of damage, in terms of negativity. When the negativity reaches the maximum, that tells us this is the kind of person who can reach the maximum. So one question people often have is, how do I put together these very different personas? I mean, the person clearly was all of these different people, so how do I even make sense of it? The key here is that we can pretend to be someone else. If we look at this using masks, and we know that on the one hand we have the actions of an angel, and on the other hand we have the actions of some kind of devil, we know that there are two possibilities. One possibility is that we have an angel who is wearing the mask of a devil, and that might be the case. The other possibility is that we have a devil who is wearing the mask of an angel. One of these realities is true, and the other one isn't true. What is more likely? Is it that a good person pretends to be a bad person? Is it that somebody who's honest and decent and has got a good heart and wants to help other people goes around pretending to steal, to murder, to kill kittens and so on? I mean, the question is, is the kitten dead? Has the person actually murdered anyone? Have they actually stolen anything? 
Now, if they have, you could go, well, they're pretending to be a bad person, but they're not really deep down inside a bad person. They're a good person who's pretending to be a bad person. Is this the case? Have you ever encountered someone like this? Or instead, have you ever encountered someone who actually was a bad person pretending to be a good person? Which of the two scenarios is more plausible? You will decide. You will decide if you think that good people pretend to be bad people because they've got reasons, or if bad people pretend to be good people because they have reasons. What are the advantages and disadvantages? What advantage would a good person have to pretend to be a bad person? And what does it mean? If it's just about putting up barriers and having boundaries, then it can make sense to be a bit protective. It's a bit like the dog that growls to make sure that it doesn't have to fight. Okay, that's very limited negativity. However, if on the other hand, the person actually is a horrible person, if it's the kind of person who's capable of having the three out of three negative behavior, what advantage would they have to pretend the other person who can do all of the good things? Well, if they are the person who do all the good things, they have free access to other people. They have a lot of benefits of pretending to be a good person. They have a lot of benefits of making people believe that they are actually an angel. So the differentiating question is, how do they act? What is the worst they can do? If the worst they can do is a lot of negativity, that tells us that this is who they are and the positive things they did were simply to pretend to be this person to make other people trust them. I always recommend look at the worst behavior a person has. The worst behavior someone has tells us what they are capable of doing. This is one of the reasons why paying attention to the lies, the deceit, the dishonesty is so important. And remember, it's not an average. It's not saying the person did do horrible things, but they also did good things. That's equivalent to saying the person did kill kittens, but they also donated money to charity. We don't care. Donating money to charity does not absolve them from killing the kittens. It's equivalent to saying if you put your head in the oven and your feet in the freezer, at average you're at a good temperature. The extremes are what matter. As we know, all it takes is to murder one person to be a murderer. And you could say, well, all of the other days of their life, they didn't murder anyone. So on average, I mean, mostly they're a good person. We don't care. It just takes one occurrence of someone doing something bad for them to be that person. Because if they can do it once, they can do it again. And this is one of the hardest part of dealing with narcissists is we have to look at the different personas and accept that not all of them can be true. Some of these are mutually exclusive. So if we understand that the worst possible behavior is who the person truly is, that's who they were nearing the end of the relationship and at the end of the relationship, and also how they were through most of the relationship, that also tells us that who they were at first and who they were afterwards is not who they really were. And these were fake personas that were designed and calibrated specifically in order to break through your emotional immune system and defense system to be able to infiltrate your life and destroy it from the inside once you let your guard down.